you. I think, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have got my basswood sheet here. I'm using this uh, thin basswood to burn because I put this inside of a frame and it's just, it's easier to frame these. Um, I've got my, my image here. This is an image uh, I took at the Bamboo Park here in Prattville yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And it's um, in the description. The link is in the description. So if you want to download it, you can. Last week, uh, when I posted that video asking you guys what you would maybe want to see me burn, most people asked for uh, shading or, you know, trying to burn realistic pieces. So I ran down to the bamboo park and got this and I thought it would be a good, a good shading piece. It's not really complex or anything. I've gone ahead and added my, um, what do you call it? Transfer to the wood. And I've got an angled shot this time. Last time I had an overhead shot and I think people were wanting more of the close-up looks into what I'm, into what I was working on. So I am using my True Art Burner today with the spoon shader. And right now I'm at a 65, which is a little bit high for shading, but uh, this, this spoon shader, because it's, you see how it's attached to the tip here. It doesn't transfer heat as well as some of the other tips. So you just have to go up a little bit higher on your heat. So let's talk about shading. Um, hey, Bigfoot. Uh, so there are, you know, four or five main things you want to keep in mind for shading. Um, the first thing is use a good wood. You want to make sure that you are using, hey, Wonder Arts. Uh, you make, you want to make sure you're using a wood that's going to take your shading well. So you want to make sure you're picking a wood that's light colored and has a consistent grain pattern so you don't have to deal with, um, you know, a grain that's light and a grain that's dark because it's going to make your shading look weird. Uh, basswood to me is the best one. It's the best wood for shading. Any kind of um, wood burning that you want to do that has any kind of realism to it. It ha it's so nice and light and the wood is also really dry so you're not going to have like moisture coming out as you're burning and it's very consistent throughout you've got a really consistent grain pattern on there so it's really a really good wood for shading um number two is use a shader tip i like the spoon shaders um you can use a flat shader if you want here's um this is the flat shader that True Art offers, and and you can use it to shade. It works just fine. I just prefer the the spoon sh shader because it it just glides across the wood a little bit easier. And number three is use a low heat. You want to make sure, hey Connie, um, that you're using a, a lower heat. If you're burning too hot. You're going to have to go really fast in order to keep from over scorching or over burning and you're going to make more mistakes that way it's just it's harder to control when your heat is too high if you start at a lower heat and build up to the color that you want it's much easier to control so i'm going to start here on this little cut in the bamboo let me turn my heat down I'm going to go down to 55 here. And I apologize for the rain, you guys, if it's loud. Um, I have a metal roof, and it just it just is loud in here when it's raining. I'm just going to kind of fade this up. Kind of soften that edge. The other thing I do is go in a circular motion. You don't want to leave your pen on the wood too long or it's going to over scorch and burn 
too much in one spot. So you want to always keep it moving. I like a circular motion like this. And I just keep going over the same spot again and again and again until I reach the shade that I want to reach. And you can see it just kind of fades. Oh, I'm going to move into the shot now. Um, I'm just going to fade it upward like this. If you go a little bit slower, you can get a little bit of a darker color. And you want to just adjust your speed as opposed, as opposed to adjusting your heat. It's much easier to get the tonal values that you want at a lower heat when you just continually go over the same spot again and again and again and build up to the, to the tone that you want. If you want it to be darker, just go slower. Turn it a little bit. Hey, T Dukes. So I'm going to kind of line the edge here a little bit just to kind of make it look a little bit curved on the ends. Go a little bit darker and then just kind of fade outward. So right here where I want it to be darker, I'm just going to go a little bit slower, leave my tip on the wood longer. And now I'm going to fade outward to a lighter color, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. And you just kind of keep going over the spot again and again and again until you reach the value that you want. And I'm going to leave the center the raw wood color. That way it looks faded from the edge. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Get a darker edge. And you just have to spend some time and and put some practice in. It's a it's a long process. Uh, a regular I don't know like nine by eleven sized portrait or you know a piece that has a realistic look to it. You know takes me six to eight hours. It just takes a long time to fill in this whole space with these realistic shading values. So there we go. We've got kind of a shaded piece from edge to edge there. So let's look at, I'm going to turn it like this so I can reach it a little better. And check comments. Haven't burned since Christmas. Oh, is there any reason why I just hadn't been feeling it? Maybe needed a break from it. So on these ridges here, I need them to be really dark because it looks, you know, these are these, um, breaks or sections in the bamboo and they're always really dark so i'm going to start here with this dark edge 
and then it's got a dark edge underneath and then it's kind of lighter in the center. So I'm just going slow, letting my tip rest on the wood longer until it gets that darker color. And then I'm just going to kind of fade out that hard line. I'm just kind of going over that hard line over and over and over again until it starts to soften a little. I'm going to add a little bit more depth here underneath this bit. Just needs a little bit more contrast in there. I'm going to add a little bit of shade in the edges. Just go over it a bunch of times. Okay, and then I can just start fading out that hard line. I'm going to go faster and faster, faster over that same spot a bunch of times until it starts to fade. You kind of just have to train your eyes to see when it, that hard line starts to fade, you can kind of move downward a little bit more and start creating that gradient. You may have to go over it again and again and again to get it to look the way you want it to look. And I'll see a little bit of a carbon mark in there still. So I'm going to grab my sand eraser, get rid of that mark. There we go. I feel like it needs to go inward a little bit more. It's a little too bright still. a little bit more shading in there. It almost just looks a little too rounded, doesn't it? I'm going to kind of flatten it out some more. There we go, that's better. Do a comment check. Oh my goodness, thank you for your content and your instruction. You're very welcome, Lagstrom. Oh my goodness, that was so incredibly sweet of you. So I'm just going to keep on, I'm going to go a little bit faster here and start fading this upward. Just fade, fade, fade. There we go. Now we've got like a nice little uh, bamboo lip there. I don't know what you call those. Does anybody know the name of those? I have no idea. <laughs> Ragstrom, that was my very first super chat. I can't thank you enough. I don't know um, if you guys know what super chats are, but that was my very first one. Okay. So same thing here, I'm just going to darken that edge and then go a little bit faster, start fading, fading, fading. Most of the time I'm able to cover up the, um, the carbon marks with some darker burns, but once in a blue moon you'll be shading something that doesn't 
it's so light that you still see that carbon mark. And the uh, sand eraser really helps clean those off. Or you can use um, a razor blade and kind of just keep flat and sort of just shade off a layer of that wood. This is really bugging me for some reason. It looks, um, it looks too curved or something. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to fix that on the edge a little bit. That looks a little better. Okay. So I'm going to flip this around and do this other side here. So I'm going to just keep it really, really dark. Go slower. A nice dark line. And then just start to fade out that line by going a little bit faster. And just let it start fading out. So I get a nice gradient on it. You could even um, set up some, set up a steel life or something like that and use it to practice. Grab some basswood or even just, you know, draw a circle and practice shading the edges and kind of go inward to make it look like a ball. And just give yourself a little bit of shading practice that way. I like this needs to be a little bit darker here. Just to give it a little bit of contrast. There we go, that looks better. And it's okay to step away from something for a little bit too and come back to it. I can tell you that sometimes you spend too many hours looking at the small sections of a piece and you, you just can't see the whole thing and it helps to kind of walk away for a little while and uh, kind of reset your eyes so that you can see any places that maybe need touching up or maybe need a little bit more work. I'm going to do a comment check real quick. Well... What type of wood learning tool is that? Oh, this is my true art. There's a link below. I put a link in the description. The one from Hobby Lobby. Um, if you're talking about the the Walnut Hollow burner that has wire tips, that's real. That's a great uh, tool to get started with. It doesn't get as hot as as the true art that I'm using right now. So if you're wanting to upgrade, the True Art is a is a great way to go. I've got a review here on the channel if you want to check that out. Um, and then there's some other burner options too. I've got 
I've got like five burners that I use that I really like and they're all they're all different brands they all have uh, different features so it really depends on um, what you're looking to get out of a burner but they're all good brands they all have um, pros and cons okay there we are are we back I lost internet connection for a second the rain is becoming a problem Hi. Can you guys see me still or again? <laughs> okay, good. So I'm still just working on this little bamboo piece here. And I'm not even really looking at the picture. I'm kind of just doing my, my own thing here. Once I get it all shaded, I could go back and add, if you look at the picture, it's got like these sort of vertical markings in it. And you can really see them on this piece right here. So, once you get it all shaded, you could go back and add some more details, give it some more realism. I'm going to keep fading up with So what I really want to show you guys too, so if you look on this piece right here, so this is the piece of bamboo I'm working on right now. The one next to it is really, really dark. So when you're looking at shading pieces, you want to make sure that you're kind of staying in a certain tonal range because you don't want to you don't want to burn too dark or too light in one area. You want to give yourself some space to burn the things around it so you have enough contrast from one element to the next. So I'm going to go up on my heat a little bit. Not a lot. I'm going to go up to a 65 I just want to give myself, uh, let's see. I just want to give myself enough heat so that I can go a little bit darker than what's showing right here. So I'm just going to kind of follow this edge and go a little bit darker. And this is really going to give me a nice contrast from one piece to the next. And I'm upside down now. Let me show you the picture. So if you look, it's really dark here on the edge and then it kind of fades outward to a lighter color. So I'm gonna keep it dark. And I'm going to start fading outward from here. When you're looking at these images, you want to break them up almost into sort of mini sections, little tiny sections that you can replicate one at a time, like a puzzle piece. So right now I'm working on this little block right here. I really want to get rid of this hard, hard line right here and make sure it's got a nice fade. And this whole strip, this whole left side of the bamboo is going to pretty dark color. So I'm going to keep going over this and over it until it reaches a nice deep color. Now it starts to fade out a little bit. And it kind of has a medium sort of tone. And 
I'm going a little bit faster here so that I can achieve a lighter color. And then over here on the right side, it has a pretty light tonal value. So there, we've gotten a really nice gradient. I'm gonna add a little bit of a shade on the edge here so that it gives it just a little bit of a curvature. It looks a little bit more curved on the side. I'm just gonna go over that edge again and again and again until it gets a little bit of a darker color. Now we've got a nice, nicely shaded piece. It's got a nice contrast to this piece next to it. And if I wanted to go back and add these like sort of striations, these like uh, vertical markings into the bamboo, I'm just gonna drag my tip across the wood a little bit. I don't want them to be too perfect. I want them to be kind of blotchy. And just add a couple of these sort of striations or sort of markings in the bamboo here. You can add a couple of darker ones, a couple of lighter ones, just to give it some depth, have a little bit of variety there so it doesn't look too symmetrical. You don't want it to look too perfect or it won't look real. It'll look a little too good. You want to kind of mix it up a little bit. We add a couple of really, really dark ones. Kind of right one right here, maybe another one just kind of right here. Okay, so now we've got a nicely shaded little section there. I'm going to do a comment check. That's a nice tool. Yes, I love, um, I love my true art. I've had it for a couple of years now. Do I use a mask? Um, I should, but no, I don't. I always recommend that people use a mask. Um, I have an exhaust right above. It is right above my desk. And I have a, um, a tube that runs down to my desk and it pulls the smoke away from my desk and out of my shop. It runs up into the attic. Uh, I don't run it when I'm filming because it's loud and it drowns me out. But it does help me like when I'm burning in here, especially when I'm burning deep stuff. Like I like to burn a lot of deep texture. And having that exhaust will help pull a lot of that smoke away from my face and out of the room. But if you don't have an exhaust option, a mask is a really good option. A respirator. There's a 3M respirator that I really like that I use. If you look on my channel, I have a safety video where I cover that, that respirator and the filters that go on it. And then there's links to Amazon to it. But it's just a 3M respirator. You can Google it and it'll come up. I'm gonna go down on my feet again. Now it's a little too high for this little bit right here. I'm going to kind of fade this edge a little bit and just go over that edge really easily, really softly and just kind of fade it out. And do the same thing above. And then it just kind of naturally creates that lighter strip in the middle.
I'm going to do the one down here. Just kind of darken it a little bit here on the edge. And then this side is a little darker. Really just go slow there. Get a nice dark mark. And fade it out. Okay, now I'm going to fade the, the little strip here. I'm just going to use my circular motion and go over that edge again and again until it kind of softens it up. And you can just kind of see that line just disappear. It just softens up so nicely. There we go. And then you got the same thing. Kind of repeat the same pattern in the next section. And create a really dark mark. I'm going to go up on my feet again. I'm going to go up to a 65. There we go. I'm just kind of burn this dark edge again. So I noticed in the video that I posted last week when I asked you guys about whether or not you had a particular type of thing you wanted to see me burn in the lab, uh, somebody asked about burning in a large area, just like a, a flat black burn. Um, is there a fast way to do that? Um, no, <laughs> I don't have a better answer for that. I wish there was a fast way to do that. Um, the trouble comes in with the size of the tips, right? Like there's no really large tip that's going to help you cover a large area in a short amount of time. It's one of those things you kind of have to just sit down and, and trudge through. Um, you can try using a torch. I don't know particularly what type of piece this person was referring to, but if you're using, if it's a, a really, really large area, like maybe you're working on a large format piece, uh, you can try using a torch. I know there are a lot of people that use, um, that do like wood burn art with torches and they burn like on these big sheets of plywood and stuff. Uh, I have never tried that. I have used a torch in my burning, but I really just use a torch for like accent stuff. Um, like if I want to burn a, a simple background or if I want to do an all over torch burn where I kind of get like that distressed wood look, I will use a torch, but I don't ever use a torch for really decorative stuff. So if you want to go that route, you can, but unfortunately, when you're burning with a pen, there's just no fast, easy way to cover a lot of area. I do like to burn texture, like deep texture, instead of just a flat burn. I think it just adds a little something to the piece. But if you're burning something, you know, realistic, that may not be a good fit. comment check okay are you guys still with me i just want to make sure i haven't disconnected because of the rain okay does anybody have a topic for next time an april topic something we can burn together in april I 
really been getting into abstracts and I just absolutely love to create funky stuff. So now I'm just going to go over in this section over and over and over again, just trying to get it to a nice consistent value. You can see there's some splotchiness going on. Blotches here. And for me, the best way to do that is just kind of go over and over and over it until you see those splotches kind of fade away. Once it starts to become all the same tonal value, the splotches just kind of disappear into it. And it gets really light over here again. I'm going to add a little bit of a darker edge so we can see that curvature. Okay, so I'm going to add some, yes, you're still with me, okay, good, thank you, Connie. <laughs> How about a portrait, or long human hair? Okay, we can do that. I won't be able to do a whole portrait in a session, but um, we can certainly start one. And hair is tricky, it is really tricky. Every little strand has to be accounted for. And it can get tough to, to pick them all out. So I'm just kind of adding all the little marks in here. Get another section down. And add a little dark, dark bit right here. Fade it out. Just kind of add another dark bit right here. And fade it out on both sides. And fade it downward. And then fade this bright lip area. I don't want it to be too bright. There we go. Let me show you guys real quick. If you get outside, see this little little blip here where I got outside. I like to grab a razor blade. You can use an X-Acto knife if you want to. And you just kind of shave off that layer. Try to keep the blade flat. You don't want it to be pointed down in the wood or it's going to gouge it. And you just kind of shave that layer off. And it'll just come right off. You accidentally get outside the lines a little bit. Not too bad. Another reason to keep your heat low. The deeper you burn down in there, the harder it's going to be to, to get that out. Let me go back up on my heat. A nice dark line here.
Okay, it's not just me. No, it's not just you, especially the long hair. I found that like animal fur, like short animal fur is pretty easy because it's just like little scrubber marks like this, scrubber, scrubber. But when you're working on human hair, especially, long, you know, it's long, got these like long burn marks you have to make. And sometimes it's easier, like if you've got some some hair that's kind of highlighted so like you've got clumps of hair where it's shaded all around and you've got some like darker sections and then you've got some areas of the hair that are really light sometimes it's easier to take away a burn than it is to try to avoid burning it if that makes sense like instead of not burning an area and leaving raw wood it's easier to go back after and um, like you, you can use a razor blade. I've even seen some people use a dremel and they dremel away little pieces, little layers of the wood that make it nice and bright again. And that's what creates that lighter, those lighter strands of hair. And some people even add uh, paint. I've seen people add sort of thinned out white paint on top it kind of adds those layers of um, of highlight to the hair so it really just kind of depends on which way you want to go and what the picture looks like but it is definitely tricky it's not an easy thing to do And my dark side there. Okay, this one's got some pretty deep, sort of dark marks in there. So I'm gonna add a little dark one right there. And then another one right here. And it's got some little dark splotches right here. Some little splotchy marks. This is the kind of stuff I like in realism because you really can't mess it up. You just kind of have to add some little marks and I'm going to fade some of them out so they don't have such hard lines. I'm going to add some kind of medium ones. There we go. Now we've got three sections of that dark bamboo burnt. I'm going to burn this little loop right here. I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow there. Okay. Just kind of fade that out like this. I'm going to leave it a little bit on the lighter side. Fast, 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 fast. And that carbon is really showing up, so I'm going to erase that. There we go. Nice and clean. All right, you guys. So I think I'm going to wrap it up for the evening. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you got some good shading tips. And I am going to continue working on this piece and continue with a shading tutorial. And I'm going to post it 
in my sea of fans area so if any of you are my sea of fans or if you want to join me over on sea of fans um i post tutorials there thank you oh you're so welcome kind thank you for joining me i always appreciate anybody that wants to join me in my lives and thank you rydstrom i really really appreciate the gift um so if you guys want to continue watching this you can get, join me over there and see if fans there's a link below and i will finish this piece there and give some more shading tips and uh yeah so join me next month i will be burning again live and i will try to put together something for that hair to date so we're trying to figure out something that we can burn so we can get some good hair burning tips thank you so much i'm so glad you enjoyed it and i will see you guys next month thanks everybody